even without the hydrofoil, these boats outperform any other boat on the market. Stability wise, performance wise, turning uh, on the face of a wave in a trough, there's, there's, no, there's no comparison. This, this boat is out on, uh, on a league, in a league of its own. Hello, my name is Pat Jones from Wave Rider Boats. Now before I start, I'd just like to explain uh, the reason why uh, we're looking at hydrofoils on the boats, why I experimented with hydrodynamics and the hydrofoils. Wave Riders are designed with the wide reverse chain that you're getting hydrodynamic lift underneath them. And this is what the boat collar does to a standard boat. It produces hydrodynamic lift underneath uh, underneath the revert, wide reverse chain once it's fitted to the boat. Okay, uh, additionally, as an optional extra, we have available the hydrofoils that I'm just about to explain to you why they work, how they control the front of the boat, why they act like hydrofoil, uh, like shock absorbers in the front, um, controlling the front of the boat, especially when it gets rough, especially when uh, you want to come home and your speed is down to say 10 or 15 knots, you can be doing your 25, 30 knots with your hydrofoils. This is the difference that they make. So just let me explain to you now how it all works. Wave Rider, the design itself, performs really well. The ride is very smooth, the ride is accurate. Everything about the Wave Rider ticks all the boxes. If there was going to be an improvement made, it would be punching into a chop. After experiencing how a hydrofoil controls the front of the boat, I thought, why not try a hydrofoil on a wave rider? The wave rider hull is suitable for, for, the, um, for the hydrofoil. So I thought, okay, let's, let's try it. So here we have, this is, this is a wave rider. Uh, that's the bottom of the boat. Then we have the wide reverse chine going up to the side of the boat. So we have the hydrofoil dynamics happening in underneath the ride reverse chine. When a boat goes over a wave, for argument's sake, I'll draw a, a swell like this. As the boat's going over the, over the wave, of course that's, uh, here's your boat. going over the wave, as it, as it comes over, or yeah, as it comes over, the bow of the boat is, is free falling, for want of a better word, it's free falling into the next swell. And this is where the pounding comes, whether it's chop, whether it's a swell, as it goes over one, it comes down. The front is not under control. If we could control the front of the boat somehow, uh, give it some sort of suspension, for want of a better word, then it's going to take that pounding out of it. And I hope you all agree with that. And what happens is, when we fit a hydrofoil, if we fitted a hydrofoil down here, so there's our hydrofoil now. I'll make the boat a little bit longer so it's more in proportion. So here's your hydrofoil operating down here. When it comes through, the hydrofoil is still, hopefully, is still in the water, suspending it. So the boat, the front doesn't contour. The back of the boat will contour, but the front doesn't because we've only got hydrofoils on the front of the wave riders, not necessary to put them on the back. Okay, so how do you get a, a hydrofoil that's going to go about 600 millimeters below the bottom of the boat? How are you going to retract that? How are you going to put that on a trailer? So what we did was we made the hydrofoil basically the same shape as what the reverse chine is. And then we do the leg going up through here and we do a centerboard casing inside the boat so that no water overflows inside the boat. You've got adjustment and all that. So what happens is you retract the hydrofoil up into the reverse chine area. You hardly even know it's there. And you, I think you can see on the videos that you can't, you just see that it's there. Allows you to put it on and off the trailer. So here you see the wide reverse chine common on all the wave riders, uh, certain angles and all that, but because it's an inverted V, you'll see the hydrofoil itself is an inverted V. As I said before, you can't compress a liquid, so whatever water is trapped in underneath the hydrofoil, 
uh, is producing lift and it's the same with the wide reverse chime. Whatever water is being trapped in that area there from if you drew a straight line across there you'll see that that's a hydrofoil. There's your hydrofoil there and that goes either side port and starboard all the way to the transom all the way to the bow. We've now fitted a simpler design hydrofoil as you can see it's smaller but the surface area when you put the two foils together there's one either side port and starboard when you put those two hydrofoil surface areas together along with the trim on your outboard engine because the outboard engines now are six this is a five and a half meter boat uh, this will take 150 horsepower and do 40 odd knots so at 40 odd knots as a, a, a barefoot water skier 100 kilo water skier can um, barefoot water ski because of the speed that he's doing through the water. And it's the same as these. So you don't need adjustment on your foils. You've got it all on the trim on your engine. So if people move around inside the boat with these boats, you get a smoother ride up the front. So if more people move up the front to sit in the, the front area here or lean up against the side, all you have to do is trim the engine out and it will take the weight, help take the weight uh, of the foils in the front area. So everything is, um, finely thought out and uh, accurately calculated so that the boat can be as safe as possible on the water and also perform as good as we can possibly get on the water. Now you must remember with this boat um, in particular it's not finished this is a, a prototype. Now the hydrofoil goes down through a centerboard casing like in a yacht. So in the retracted position, it's fully retracted up into that wide reverse chine area so that you can get the boat on and off a trailer without catching on anything. And it's simply to, uh, to put this foil down and to lift the foil up. There's only, there's a pin, a locking pin, which you pull out. And of course the foil goes down. This, th this is the locking point here. So this, this position here will go down to this position here. So that's how far down past the chine the foil will be sitting, acting like a big shock absorber taking the weight of the front of the boat. There's your shock absorber, there's your control, and what it does is it acts like the keel on a yacht, so you can be going side onto white water, and as long as that's below the water, the forces hitting up against the side of the boat doesn't affect it. I'm hoping to get some footage of the boat going through white water side on, and you will see how easy the boat doesn't get knocked around, doesn't move sideways, it locks it in because you've got a keel below the boat, a wing keel below your boat, and that works very effectively, very safe, and as I said, this boat is designed for offshore purposes in extreme conditions. So uh, the box section here is all filled with foam. Uh, it has guides on either side to lock it in, so that's, that's really quite solid in there. Uh, this, the leg has been strengthened so that it, will, it can easily take the weight of the foil, the weight of the boat on the foil. The foil is mounted on a solid aluminium strut uh, with an extremely uh, well-built plate case inside the boat so there's little or no chance of it uh, suffering any damage. Now in the early days you'll see in those videos that we had a single foil on the front and the single foil on the front with a single outboard, we used to get a bit of cavitation. So we have the single outboard on the back, we have now have twin foils on the front because the twin foils on the front fully retract up into the reverse shine, allowing you to put it on the trailer. If you had the single foil in the center, you'd have to have a massive set of rollers, you'd have to line it up. It would pose a few problems having the single foil on the front. So we've done away with the single foil and we now have single outboard with twin foils. It's an optional extra. Depends on what sort of conditions you're going to go in, um, but you can't have them fitted later. They add about $5,000 to the price of a, of a wave rider. So uh, you can have them fitted and never use them, but they're there. Now the reason why we put a hydrofoil on one of the softest riding boats on the market is to control the front. The front needs that control in certain conditions. And, uh, and I think everyone who's, who's been on the water knows that you can chop as chop, but when you've got chop and swell, and these boats are designed for offshore, in, be, in between the chop, there will be nothing. And no matter what boat it is, it will fall into that hole. Now the council hasn't fixed these holes up yet, so we've got to design boats that will go over these holes softly. And this is where the hydrofoils come in. When it gets rough, uh, instead of falling into that hole and, and, and banging as all boats do, then you will find that the hydrofoil suspends the front 
and will go straight over the top of that and actually it will be so effective that you will get a smoother ride in the front of the boat than what you do down the back of the boat. It also allows you to go faster. So instead of, you know, everyone drives to the conditions, we put our, the largest outboard motor we can put on the boat so that we can go from A to B as quick as we possibly can. When it's rough, we slow down because we've got to drive to the conditions. No one wants to lose their teeth. Um, so with the hydrofoils suspending the front of the boat, you can maintain your, the, the fastest speed possible in your boat and you're actually flying over the waves. This is when you're punching into it because the swells, the faster you go, they become closer together and you can be doing your 30 knots through what normally you'd have to slow down to 20 knots to do. That's how, that's how effective the hydrofoils are. And that's why we put them on the boat, to increase that speed, to increase that safety. Um, and as I said, it acts like two keels in the front. When you're, when you're driving the boat, it's like a forklift. The front locks in and the back will, the back will turn. So you can do immediate turns uh, and, and the wind won't blow you. When you slow down at a fishing spot, you can slow down and the wind's not going to blow you off it because you've got your keels down. When you get to, the, to your fishing spot, you drop the anchor or you set your electric motor up, then you can retract those foils up underneath, up underneath here so that you don't even know that you've got them underneath the boat and you can fish to your heart's content. And the whole thing has been thought out very well. And we've got naval architects who are designing all this for waterproofing. We've got self-draining decks. Look, it's all done. Everything's been done for you. This is the way of the future, the hydrofoils.